Good morning, everybody. As you see, as you're all signing on, our store looks a little different. <laughs> um, we are in the new makeshift classroom. Um, we are actually over in the fabric area. Uh, Scott and I, we cleaned the rugs this weekend, so we had to move everything off to make sure that we could clean these rugs nice. Today um, is Monday, May 11th. Happy Mother's Day. I hope everybody enjoyed their wonderful day yesterday. Um, I am here today with Sheila, and we are doing a mini embroidery club, which I'll let Sheila talk more about that. But I'm letting everybody just get signed on and get ready. So um, welcome to our page today. Um, so we are doing a mini embroidery club and everything that Sheila pretty much shows you will be the 20% off embroidery club discount. There's only two items that are not because they're already discounted. Um, so I'll let Sheila again go over that when the time is coming, but welcome. I am going to flip around this camera and put it on Sheila so she can get the embroidery club started. Good morning. I really love being in front of the color wall. Um, who wouldn't want that as a backdrop? So good morning. Um, if you were signed up for embroidery club and had been coming to embroidery club, you'd know that May was the month that I was scheduled to present a club focusing on thread. Um, it was on the calendar, it was on the schedule, and it was going to be my club, and we were very excited about it. But after many conversations with Scott and Melissa, we decided to hold that club off because we thought it would be better presented when you were here physically. Um, so it's not canceled, it's just postponed to be held at a date to be determined when um, the governor lets us know that we can come back in person. So. Um, what I wanted to do today was hop on, hop on, bob in, <laughs> and talk a little bit about, I get a lot of questions about how to embroider on towels. So I wanted to do just a little um, recap on how to successfully embroider on towels. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, I don't know if you can see behind me or in front of me. Um, I also found a really fun new design, so we'll get into that in a minute, but first, um, embroidering on towels. There I have two very hard and very fast rules to successfully embroider on towels. First and foremost, oh, oh, if I had a bigger hoop there'd be more always. Always, 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 always use a topper when you're embroidering on towels for a number of reasons. Um, first of all, let me show you. I did not use a topper on this because I wanted to show you what not to do. If you can see here, you can see here on the white, you can definitely see here on the black. Um, these are just some, <clears throat> excuse me, some, pardon me, <clears throat> fonts. <laughs> the frog. <clears throat> fonts that I picked out of my sewing machine. What a topper does, and there's two types of toppers, a water soluble and a heat reactive topper. What it does, it creates a barrier between the little loops on your terry cloth and your embroidery design. And definitely, I don't know if you can, <clears throat> I know Liz is doing a great job with her camera. You can see here, what happens when you use a topper is it keeps, it, it blah, 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 um, creates a barrier between your loops on your terry cloth and your embroidery design. Also what it does, it sort of creates, um, it lets your embroidery design sort of float up on top of the nap. And this is um, true for, anything with a nap. Um, so terry cloth, fleece, polar fleece, corduroy or velvet, or anything that has a nap. Um, I even use it, wow, <clears throat> too much talking this weekend. I even use it when I embroider on t-shirts or sweatshirts. So, and the third reason that I always use it is I'm real particular in trimming my jump stitches between designs. I know that a lot of the machines now you can set up to clip or to cut the um, jump stitches between, but I'm, I'm real fussy about how to trim those. So um, if you've got your topper on here, what that does is it creates sort of that little shelf, that little 
um, so that you can pick, yeah, a little barrier that you can pick those jump stitches up. Um, I always use the tweezers and this is, you know, obviously the loops are going to come with, but I always use the tweezers and I pick those jump stitches up and then I get in there real close this way with like a little um, curved snips to trim the jump stitches. But um, always, always, always use a topper when you're embroidering on terry cloth or anything with a nap. My second hard and fast rule, hard and hard and fast rule, and I, I know that if you're embroidering and you're looking at this and you're saying, holy cow, she hooped that um, terry cloth. Well, I wanted to hoop it to show you what not to do. Talk louder. Um, I'm sorry? Talk louder. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> sorry. It's only when I do Facebook's lives that someone tells me to talk louder because usually they tell me I'm <laughs> way too loud. Um, I also, and I wanted to just, there's little gizmos that I use that make my life easier. These are the little foam comfort grips that I always keep on the screws of my, um, I'm a Bernina user, so we turn our hoops, and I know the bigger hoops, the jumbo hoop, the maxi hoop, and the midi hoop have the, um, the little knob knob to turn, but my all my other hoops have this little screw, and I keep my comfort grips on here just to make my life easier. So back to embroidering oh. on towels. When you put something with a nap in an embroidery hoop, um, two things happen. Number one, the, the loops or the nap on terry cloth back down between your inner and outer hoop and um, it causes your uh, fabric to uh, compress. And now I know you're gonna say, well, that's gonna pop up eventually. Trust me when I tell you that it doesn't. Any accidents that, have ha that happen in embroidery, I've done. Not always on purpose, but trust me when I tell you I've, that they've, I've happened, I've done it. The second thing that happens when you embroider and you put something like terry cloth in a hoop is that friction between your inner and outer hoop in the movement of the embroidery machine, <clears throat> it actually burns a little area into your fabric um, that no matter how much you puff and fluff and launder that, there's always gonna be the ghost of that hoop burn ring showing on your uh, towel. And um, I give away a lot of the towels that I embroider and the last thing you wanna do is have someone have a towel hanging in their kitchen or their bathroom with just this ghost of a hoop on it. So um, always, always, always use a topper and never, ever, ever physically hoop your terry cloth or any fabric with a nap. Um, so now you're saying, well, well, then how do I hoop my towel? Um, I've excuse, uh, exclusively um, started using the Ultra Clean and Tear Plus from OESD. It is a pressure sensitive stabilizer. I don't have a piece of it cut, but what you would do is cut it, put it in your embroidery hoop. There's a waxy sort of coating on the paper that you would score with something sharp like your little snips or a pin, score it in it. I always do a cross or the circumference of the hoop and tear that waxy paper away and it, it leaves you a tacky, surface so that you hoop your stabilizer, you don't hoop your towel, and then you place your towel or your napped fabric on top of that tacky um, surface of the hoop. So the design that I was going to tell you that I discovered recently is a new design from OESD called Bath Time Buddies, and it is um, designed to be hooded towels. I, I had Alyssa print um, a picture of what the outside of the disc would look like and those of you who say no I'm never I don't need to do bath time buddies I want to tell you that I've used the design I don't know if you can see behind me I've used it on a little hooded sweatshirt um, and we also when I was talking to Alyssa about it we decided that it would be really cute even embroidered on the hood or on the front on a kangaroo pocket on a on a not zipped sweatshirt. Um, and then we said, well, you could put it on the pocket. And then we realized that if you put it on the pocket, 
you would literally embroider your pocket closed. So don't ever do that. What you could do is if you were really adamant about putting it on a kangaroo pocket, is you could go through the effort of taking that pocket off, embroidering it and sewing the pocket back on. Or to make matters really easier, you could embroider it so, because all the designs have those little paws. You could embroider it so that the little paws were right at the top of the, the, the um, kangaroo pocket on a sweatshirt. So when you see a design that's shown for bath towels, um, you can put that design on a lot of really fun things. But as you can see, I put it on a lot of bath towels. Um, there are eight animal designs in the design pack. Each of the eight animals comes in a... I want to say a boy or girl version, but it's a flower or a non-flower version. For instance, the lion would have a flower, but he really wanted to wear a crown. Um, <clears throat> the deer, I did not put a flower on. The fo oh yeah, the, no, the deer has a flower. The fox does not have a flower. I think I did all four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, there's eight designs. So this is the turtle with no flower. He has just a little, a little design on him. Um, also, let's talk a little bit about embroidery designs. I've embroidered a lot of designs. I've embroidered great designs and I've embroidered um, okay designs. And sometimes you run into a design that has little components to it where I think to myself, whoever digitized that design really loves what they do. So when I'm watching this design stitch out with some of the eyes, let me wow. show you the giraffe. Let me show you her. Let me show you her because she's got flowers. There's just something that happens when all of those little shadings happen in the eyes um, that makes me, again, makes me say whoever's digitizing these designs really loves what they do. There's some real subtle shading and things that happen here that just, you don't see that in a lot of the designs that you're buying. Um, it made stitching these designs out a ton, a ton of fun. So I think that if you have a back, I'm going to open one of these. If you have a backyard pool or a hot tub or you have anyone, um, you go visit a lake, these don't necessarily have to be um, relegated to little ones because what you do is you use a bath towel. You use a full bath towel and a hand towel makes the hood. Um, I've also started to put names on these, so it's very easy to just stitch a little name on. Um, and these are good size. What, Alyssa, you said I should show you how big it is, because look, look, <laughs> so look, <laughs> what we do for you. Um, it makes a really good size, and this would be then your back towel. So on a little one, it would be, you know, they'd obviously, it would go right down to the floor. But if you have a teenager or a young, you know, I always want to find things to do for those tweens, you know, the 9, 8, 9, 10, 11, Alyssa's saying, yes, my kids always wonder what you're going to make for me. Um, so don't relegate just to little ones. Um, I think it's a really great gift. And it stitches out so beautifully that there's no exposed seams. Um, so there's like a French seam that they have you do on the inside of the hood. And then when you attach the hand towel to the bath towel, look how cool it ends up being. So no exposed seams, no cut seams on the towel. Um, it's a really wonderfully designed design. So back to, um, here's another, another picture that we found. Um, another way you could use these designs is on a reading pillow, and um, they used fur for his for his little mane. How cute would that be? I would definitely use a topper. Oh. Definitely oh. always use a topper on that. You mean always, 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 always use always, a topper. Always, always use a topper. So when you're, okay, you've got your sticky stabilizer, your tacky stabilizer um, hooped. What the design does is it does a placement stitch first off on your stabilizer. And you would take your hand towel, you fold it to find the center, and then it stitches its um, placement stitch with a little 
um, tick in the middle where you'd put, you just lay the edge of your towel right down on that placement line centered with, and then go ahead, do your placement stitch, put your topper down. Um, I'm a fan of the H2O water soluble topper from OESD. This is what I exclusively use. There's also a heat sensitive one. Um, heat, heat, go, heat, heat to go. Heat to go. Um, I, this is just the one that's, that's next to my, next to my machine. I use it for, you're never going to say, wow, I wish I wouldn't have used a topper. Um, I use it. I always err on the side of using a topper. You do not hoop your topper. You, don't hoop. The you topper float it on the top. Right on top of your placement stitch. So your, your, um, topper would go down. Your applique fabric would go down. Um, fusible woven on the back of your applique fabrics for a couple of different reasons. One, it sort of ups the thread count of your fabric that you're, you're embroidering on so that there's no puckers or wrinkles. And secondly, especially if you're using a white fabric or a light colored fabric on a dark background, it creates um, a barrier. There's no shadowing coming through of the color behind. So fusible woven on the back of all your applique fabrics, uh, water soluble H2O or stitch, stitch H2O topper. Um, and, and back to the topper creating a barrier, these towels are all applique. And if you have ever tried to trim something that's on top of a terry cloth, I don't care how careful you are. If you're trimming an applique fabric that's laying on top of terry cloth, you're going to start to stitch all those or clip all those little loops on the terry cloth. So I, I wish I would have left one with the topper on it. So your applique fabric is down. Now you're trimming your applique fabric that's laying on top of that topper. So your scissors is never touching the loops on your terry cloth, which makes um, trimming applique fabric um, a breeze when it's resting on top of the topper. Also the Ultra Clean and Tear um, Plus, when, you, when you're finished with your embroidery and you're flipping around to the back, yeah, this is a do as I say, gonna say, not as I do. I missed the back of what's left on the back of my embroidery project with a little Mr. Bottle. And then I tear, I use the, um, my point, the little tool, my little, my little pointer. It's here. It's, here. it's truly here. I use that to get under my, after I've misted my, what's left on my stabilizer. I know this table's not that big. It's here somewhere. And I use it to pull up, um, to pull away my, I know, right? Thank you, Alyssa. I, I would use that to pick up what's left of my stabilizer and it peels off very easily. What you see left on here is just my bobbin thread. Would I or should I have used the same color um, thread in the bobbin? Then th this would be much less visible. Yes, yes. I could tell you that I did that on purpose to show it to you. Um, the fact of the matter is these towels, I did this. We did this. What are you? She's looking at the backs of them. Did I? Yeah, no. Don't, don't look underneath their skirts. <laughs> it's just rude. Um, I did all of these towels this weekend. So these are fast projects, really fast projects. Two okay. questions Two we questions. have. Do you use bias around the edges? The edges of the towels? towels? No, no. Um, let, me sh let me go back and maybe explain it a little better. And hopefully I'm answering your question. When you're attaching your hand towel, so this is a hand towel, this is a bath towel. You stitch it at, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, it was three eighths of an inch. So this would be on your sewing machine bed. You're stitching. What they tell you to do is to take this fabric. So this would be your seam. You're taking your hand towel fabric and trimming it down to a quarter of an inch. And then you're just rolling that seam, that edging. Is that what I'm calling it? This is rolled up. So see how I've sort of tried to taper that right there. 
this is rolled up then covering that raw edge of the towel in here. All right, so you're saying, here's your raw edge. Here's my raw edge. You're I'm taking it. that on over here. Yep, let me move everything. Okay. Sorry, guys. So, this is your bath towel. You're finding the center of it, very clear instructions. You're taking the edge of your hand towel. You're stitching it at three, I think it's three eighths of an inch. Then you're trimming this away down almost to the, <clears throat> excuse me, to the stitch line. It says a quarter of an inch. And then you're just rolling this up and enclosing that raw edge. Make sense? Then when I get to the, got to the edge, 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 I tapered it down. Did that answer your question? No bias at all. Nothing other than the towels on here. Okay, now the order of stabilizer again, please. The order of stabilizer. Ultra Clean and Tear Plus in my hoop. S score the top of the waxy coating away, exposing that tacky surface. You're laying your towel down on top of the tacky stabilizer. Placement stitch. The instruction. Oh, here. Wait, 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 wait. Please tell me. Oh, yes. The instructions are good, really good. Okay, maybe this will help. So this is in your hoop on your tacky stabilizer. It will stitch a placement stitch. I cut a piece of water soluble, the uh, stitch H2O covering that placement stitch. Then I have my applique fabric already prepared with the fusible woven on the back of it, and I place that right on top. It will tack it down just like a regular applique. It will follow that same placement stitch, tack it down, and now you're trimming. And the nice thing, if you can sort of see by the illustration, underneath between that applique fabric and your towel would be that topper. So now you're trimming just the applique fabric away, leaving the topper. Did that answer your question? Mm -hmm. That would be the second page of your instructions. So you've now you've you've um, trimmed your applique fabric away, and this would be your topper. And then you build up your applique. Yeah, then, then you the keep going and building. Yeah, itself has a second applique. Some of them have a second applique. Some of them are stitched. Like her feet are the same. I think she had a black applique. Some of them have an additional layer of applique fabric down. Some of them do not. Like the raccoon, there's no no second applique fabric on there. All of this is stitched beautifully, I might add. Uh, Same thing, no yeah. No applique fabric nope. left on all stitching. Oh, look at, see, I missed a couple of little, <laughs> I missed a couple of, but look at her eyes. You know, that's a great eyelash. Like She's got great eyelashes. It's really like watching someone apply makeup. There's a little shadowing and a little really, really pretty. The lion has some gold. I think. So, Joyce, did that answer? So, fusible woven on the your back, back of the applique, applique pieces. This is, this is done. This is prep, prep work. work. That's on your back of your applique fabric. Hoop. Hoop. On top of your toweling. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then applique. So, applique. Hoop, hoop, stitch H2O, then your applique. And your applique. That's already been prepared with the fusible woven. woven. Okay. Your Ultra Clean and Tear Plus, your stitch H2O, and your fusible woven, 20% off today. 20% off today. The embroidery design. Uh, $34.99 suggested retail. Retail, 20% off. Are you using fusible webbing on all layers of your applique? Um, probably, I, you know what, it, that's dependent, for me it was dependent on, my base applique always has fusible woven on. Um, I have started to use fusible woven on all, everything I've embroidered. It's just... It's just, be, it's kind of like one of those things where I'm never going to say, darn, I wish I hadn't used it. Um, a lot of times when I first started using it, I would say I should have. Now I just sort of automatically just put 
fusible woven on the back of anything that I'm going to embroider on. Always, I would, on these projects, I used it on the back of all of the base applique fabric. Um, I, I know I used it on the back of the pink ears on the, on the elephant because they were going to be on top of gray, gray and I didn't want the gray to shadow through. Um, so I guess, yes, I guess I would, you know, it happened yesterday, so would I remember? I think I definitely used it on the back of all applique fabric. That was a really long answer to a really short question. <laughs> um, other things that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, it also shows how to just, I mean, it's a great presentation. You know, this, this quarantine thing is making me a little crazy. I would have liked to have had like a wide inch satin ribbon to tie these up instead of little pieces of yarn, but you know, you use what you have. These will end up, look at all the Christmas presents I already have done. Um, these will ultimately probably be gifts um, along the way, but I think that once you roll them up, so what I've done is just taken that bath towel, folded it up twice, rolled it in from the center, and then tied it with the little ribbon um we were down in the you know Alyssa and scott um tend to be cleaning their house a little bit houses <laughs> meaning the storehouses not their home houses i don't know what they do there um but what they did was they found some towels in the storeroom downstairs so um if you know the pictures on the cover of the cd show a white hand towel um, on top of a colored towel. So we found um, a stock of white hand towels. Sorry, I had this on the floor. Um, so there is a stock of white hand towels and a box of these really nice, really big, almost like a bath sheet, really big bath towels, um, but only in pink. So if you're a fan of pink, pink bath towels and white hand towels um, they will also be available for purchase. Uh, price on the bath towel is $5.99 and price on the hand towel, I'm reading her lips, $4.99. So $4.99 for the hand towel, $5.99 for the bath towel. Not, Are not discounted. Not They're discounted. already discounted. They were, already, they were marked, I think, $7.99 mm -hmm. for, the, for the bath towel. Any so, orders? Um, can you guys just call the store or email us? It, it sounds crazy through Facebook. I cannot, I'd have to go back and listen to this whole video for me to get your orders. The same comments do not come through after I'm done to read the comments to make sure who wanted what. Please call the store. You can call East Aurora 652-2811, 716-652-2811, or could you email us? Um, info at aurorasewingcenter.com or you can email me Alyssa M as in Marie at aurorasewingcenter.com. It keeps us a little more organized so we don't forget anybody. When I asked my daughter if I could borrow one of the girls sweatshirts because I had this brilliant idea that he was going to be or she was going to be embroidered on the on, right on the hem of that sweatshirt. Little did I know that the girls all had these um, I don't know what they call those. The longer bat. I don't the know what they're called. Hems or yeah. whatever. Um, but look, so how cute would this be if this was the like the ribbed edge of the bottom of the sweatshirt? I mean, he's cute anyway. But so he, she, <laughs> she needs to just be trimmed up a little bit. So again, shading, beautiful eyeshadow. Um, all of the versions, there's, two, like I said, two of the versions, they all have flowers and then the um, alternate version of this deer would just be the boy. No fancy eyelashes. He gets no fancy eyelashes. So any other questions? I know I went through that pretty quickly. I know I get, you know, I've been embroidering for a long time and I always get a lot of questions about towels about how you stabilize how you embroider on towels to make it successful um, to just remember too hard and fast always use a topper always 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 use a topper and don't 
fall into that habit or don't fall into that mistake of hooping terry cloth um, because you're going to be you know you're always and forever going to see that little burn on the back of the towel and you're going to be sad how do you get the designs you call aurora sewing center and place an order yeah. and we'll order your embroidery design disc and then we'll call you when it's in yeah yeah, it's a new design. Um, I know that they're, you know, shipping has been, um, you know, we were so used to things being shipped in a day or two. I know I um, have gotten used to the fact that things are a little slower these days. So it's a new design. I I, I don't know, Alyssa, a couple of days. I, yeah, it takes about, couple of I'd say definitely give us a full week to call you just because everything is um, a little longer than normal. So embroidery design, um, we will order that for you. We are starting uh, an order sheet. I did not get these in time for this uh, mini embroidery club. Um, stabilizer, I do have in stock. In stock. The Ultra Clean and Tear Plus is $59.99, but you get 20% off. And there is a longer, there is a 20, this is a 15, I think there's a I think I have a 20 by something. There's also a longer one. Yep. Um, Stitch H2O is... Stitch H2O is seventeen ninety nine. Goes a Tw long way. Goes a long way. Seventeen ninety nine with twenty percent off. Ultra Clean and Tear Plus fifty nine ninety nine with um, twenty percent off. And then Fusible Woven um, is thirty seven ninety nine, and you get twenty percent off. Yeah. Is the bu is this a bundle deal? No, it's not. It's individual. Um, the towels. Um, I have on sale the pink towels, the bath towels are $5.99, the white hand towels are $4.99, and then the embroidery design is $34.99 with 20% off. So, James, um, this sort of hangs when they wear this, this sort of hangs, it sort of drapes. I was a little, I wasn't sure if I was going to embroider this way or up and down this way. I might mix it up, because I have a lot of towels <laughs> I have to put names on. Um, so yeah, don't, don't hold it just for little ones. Um, I, I don't know, Alyssa, would Morgan? Morgan would. Morgan would think of Gavin's a preteen, I, I, yeah, he's done. Unless it was a Star Wars, he, you know, he's just, he's a preteen, yeah. sorry. Yeah, I, I, so don't discount, um, like I said, if you've got, and then, and not just for bath time, pools, hot tubs, um, beach, goes to the beach, um, because it ends up, I told you, it ends up being a really nice size, so it could be a towel, you know, it could be a laying down on towel, mm -hmm. and then a snuggle wee hooded towel, so, um, Oh, well, and don't forget, I mean, not even just a to towel. Little eyes, the little gold in his eyes. Even this pillow, little I mean, garments. a little reading pillow. What a great gift. Definitely. Can you imagine? And so then, now I'm going to have to go home and find all the books that correlate with all the animals. So that's interesting. It's really hard in here with, I cannot use a microphone. It echoes. Plus, with all the furniture moved, it's really loud. Um, I'm sorry. I know I'm loud. I'm holding the camera. And I'm way over here. We're trying to do... We're trying to do all distancing. Um, the only way the volume can go up is... If you click the volume on your device, you might be able to yeah. get us louder. Because um, my phone's all the way up. I make sure I do that when I first record. And see, I keep, usually my phone's on silent because I it beeps and bleeps all day long. So I keep it on silent. So when I go to watch a video... You know, I see mouths moving and nothing coming out, so I'm constantly, you know, clicking the volume up and down. Um, so, favorite animal? I love the lion. No, we, Cindy, we do not carry the shirt. Or what shirt? Sheila's shirt? Sheila's shirt, yes. This I have those for uniform. sale. This is my uniform shirt. The um, sweatshirt with the kangaroo, or the, yeah, no, that's yeah. her granddaughter's that she used. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, everyone I did, I think was my favorite. I think I did the raccoon first. She was my favorite. Um, then I love the elephant, the giraffe, the giraffe was awesome. And the lion. 
I think the detail is amazing. How much detail you uh, you yeah, have in the really, embroidery design. Really great. I, I, so my friends at OESD, your digitizer, top, top notch. Top notch. On, top notch. Cindy, yes. The Aurora Sewing Center shirt is for sale. Yes. Then you can, uh, we can all twin. We, Why not twin? <laughs> um, yeah, it's my uniform shirt. It makes going to work very easy. Especially now. Yeah, especially now. All right, so, so if you don't have any other questions for me, um, please, if you think of something later, we want embroidery to be fun for you. Um, it's not stressful. I know sometimes when we do these specialty things that we're embroidering on, um, you know, we have to stop and think about how to stabilize and how to prepare our fabric so that once we put the effort into it, the product ends up looking uh, amazing. Um, so just, if you have any questions, certainly reach out to me, reach out to Alyssa. Um, how do I tighten a hoop with one layer of stabilizer? What mesh, the, the turn knob. Oh, I have no problem with one layer of stabilizer. Things are slipping. You, yeah, um, I think you have a baby lock. But the same thing, it still has a screw. You got to tighten it. And if you're not tightening, maybe you're, um... You need a new um, screw and it might be yeah. stripped. If it's not tightening, it should. I'm going to say that is definitely. Oh, uh, I know people who have dogs more than kids. And if I'm not mistaken. Did you not see her? Oh. Yeah. Um, I know Carrie's on here. Carrie, if you okay. could, you should post a picture somehow in the comments of your dog wearing the towel. Unless yes. Sheila can pick it up. I'm going to try to find it. Uh, what size hoop is needed? Did you? Um, this is my Bernina oval. I don't. Do they call this a five by seven? They call it a five by seven. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. five by seven. Um, oh, five ninety. That should tighten. Oh my gosh! I don't. She's oh, she can't in the camera. Oh, let me see your picture. Here, here, here. If you don't have children, but you want to put it on your oh doggy, look how cute that is. <laughs> this is our friend Carrie's dog. This is Carrie who's in the comments right now and then look how cute is that sam it is yeah it's sam it's sam. walker would never. walker would never allow this look no. at sammy look at sam <laughs> sam you're famous look at that face I know. so That's see so you don't have to just put it on your children you can put it on your dog look at sam. or your cat you just have to find really small oh, yeah. towels for your cat unless you have a fat cat I have both running issues with the flourish. I'm wondering if you need a new um, screw. You know what, Melissa? You can call the store and we can talk to the tech. <laughs> Aw, thanks, Carrie. All right. I want to thank everybody for um, watching this today. Uh, you can go back. I will um, let you all know. I'm going to flip it around. Okay. You can go back and watch these videos and we have a YouTube channel that this will be on later today and you can watch this video and this um, mini embroidery club whenever you want. Um, so thank you everybody. Have a wonderful day. Um, tomorrow is our AccuQuilt uh, Zoom uh, virtual class, um, 10 to 12 cut time quilt more presentation that you have to call and sign up for. And then from two to four is the um, Go Mastering Cube. So I will not be on tomorrow. We are having the virtual AccuQuilt um, class. So that is uh, separate than my Facebook Live, but I'll be back Wednesday in my Facebook Live and I'm pretty sure it is Nikki, but I can't remember. I think it is. Thank you, everybody. Have Thanks, a great day. Guys. See you guys soon. See you soon.